Right now on NBC 26 live at 10, a frightening scene for onlookers in downtown Green Bay as a boat crashes into the city deck. Plus, Atomic Veterans honored tonight, one hero telling his story of World War II. And President Trump pushing Congress to move quickly on a Senate health care bill, but a vote is on hold tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. A freighter traveling north on the Fox River bumped into the city deck in downtown Green Bay. This afternoon, police say the crash made the deck rise several feet, capsizing another boat. NBC's 26's Mo Hyder has the latest. That boat crash caused water levels to rise beneath the city deck. Luckily, nobody was harmed. Green Bay police say this all happened around 3 in the afternoon when the freighter bumped up against city deck. They say the captain used the thrusters of the freighter to push the water and it raised the deck nearly four feet. Police say when the freighter bumped up against city deck, it caused damage to the deck and capsized a recreational boat. Afterwards, they say it continued traveling north and also damaged the internal working of the Ray Nitschke Bridge. Green Bay police say people were able to rescue themselves. And for a freighter of that size to crash into city deck and for people basically to be good situational awareness for them, they were able to escape that area, escape any injuries, and thankfully no one's injured in this incident. Earlier, crews were testing out the bridge to make sure it's safe to use. And the Green Bay Police Department says this is still undergoing an investigation. In Green Bay, Mohider for NBC 26. And the Green Bay Police report the Ray Nitschke Memorial Bridge is now open. At least nine people were killed when flash floods swept 14 people from a family outing north of Phoenix. The Sheriff's Department in Gila County saying it happened quickly near the Verde River. Tonight, an intense search underway for a missing teenager, and you can see people clinging to a tree from cell phone video. Deputies saying among the nine dead, at least three were children. Four others were rescued by helicopter and rushed to a hospital. Normally, it's just a, a trickle of a, a creek. Uh, but during the monsoon season, it can, it can go from a foot deep to 10 feet deep in a matter of minutes. Four people were rescued early this morning. Coast Guards rescued five people on two separate incidents on Lake Michigan this weekend. All those rescued were taking part in the annual Chicago Yacht Club race to Mackinac. One rescue happened about 40 miles east of Port Washington, the other 30 miles east of Fox Point. In that case, the boat had capsized due to powerful winds. And in Indiana Lake this weekend, a driver lost control of her boat, sending 10 people in the boat overboard, but didn't stop there. Now several people are seriously injured, and that driver is under arrest. NBC's Kerry Sanders reports. A frightening scene on Lake Gage, Indiana. A 21-foot motorboat spinning out of control, and no one's behind the wheel. Oh, no! The chaos unfolded when police say 20-year-old Dominic Effinger, who was operating the boat, hit a high rate of speed and made a violent turn, throwing all 10 people overboard, four seriously injured. By the time help arrived, the boat was stalking like a motorized shark, making circles at 30 miles per hour. A sheriff's deputy throwing a rope to entangle the boat's propeller. The boat smashes into that officer's patrol boat. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh no! Oh my god! What are they doing? Another officer on a jet ski leaps onto the boat, finally bringing it to a stop. Once I was close enough, it was just a matter of stepping from his boat into that boat. Authorities say alcohol was a factor and the incident is now under investigation. The boat's operator was arrested and faces charges. Kerry Sanders, NBC News. Pretty scary there. Well, it was a nice summer day here in Green Bay. Can we expect more this week for the work week? Yeah, Regina, we are going to see some more nice weather to at least begin the work week tomorrow, but then it turns warmer, more humid, and we do have some more storm chances. But today was a beautiful day. Highs in the 70s, below average actually for this time of the year. And it's going to be a cool night tonight. We're already down to 60 degrees in Green Bay with clear skies. Here's a look at the satellite and radar picture. We have Clear conditions across Wisconsin with high pressure firmly in control. Temperatures will be falling down into the 50s tonight. Already spots up north dipping down into the 50s. Some spots will even dip into the 40s to start off your Monday, but lots of sun. Highs near 80. We'll talk more about the nice weather and the chance of seeing the northern lights tonight coming up in the full forecast. Regina. All right, thanks, Matt.
The president and his lawyer today continue to downplay a meeting between Donald Trump Jr. and others with a Kremlin-connected Russian lawyer during the presidential campaign. This as the U.S. Senate decided last night to again delay a vote on health care, putting off the president's promise to repeal and replace Obamacare. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has our story from Washington. Protesters and cheers as the president attends the women's U.S. Open golf tournament at his New Jersey course. This as he unleashed a barrage of tweets about his son's meeting with a Kremlin-connected Russian lawyer during the campaign. Hillary Clinton can illegally get the questions to the debate and delete 33,000 emails, but my son Don is being scorned by the fake news media? The president's lawyer defended that meeting on all the morning talk shows. Well, there's nothing illegal about that meeting. So that's number one, like covering up that is, is a, a big word to use, but there was nothing illegal to cover up. Illegal or not, the Senate Intelligence Committee still wants to question those who attended, including Trump Jr., son-in-law Jared Kushner, and then campaign chair Paul Manafort. All of these efforts to say there was only smoke and there's no fire, well, that's all been put to rest. This is clearly brings the investigation to a new level. The Russian story still making headlines as the president's promise to repeal Obamacare is indefinitely postponed. Saturday night, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell delayed a vote as Senator John McCain recovers from surgery. But the GOP still doesn't have the votes to pass it. For all Republicans' complaints about the death spiral of Obamacare, they don't fix it. They simply subsidize with taxpayer money. Paul and a handful of other Republicans have said they will not support the GOP bill. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. For the first time, the state of Wisconsin is honoring atomic veterans. These brave men and women participated in nuclear tests between 1945 and 1962. Jerome Gale is one of 33 atomic veterans in Wisconsin, and he's making it a mission to make sure the stories of atomic veterans doesn't go untold. From 1956 to 1959, Gale and thousands of veterans participated in atomic bomb tests and were exposed to radiation. Representative Ron Tussler, a resolution was passed to make July 16th National Atomic Veterans Day in Wisconsin. We have a lot of guys that were in the Navy, you know, and the guys that were on cleanup detail and, and cleaning up areas and stuff that had a lot of radiation. I felt sorry for these guys out there. The military personnel like Gale, who participated in these activities, were sworn to secrecy. Congress rescinded the secrecy agreement in 1996. Wisconsin is just one of three states to honor atomic veterans. Gale is confident more states will join. Marquette County Sheriff's Department say a home explosion in rural Marquette County injured multiple people. It happened in the town of Montello. Sheriff's deputies found the residents outside with non-life-threatening injuries. An investigation is underway into the cause of the blast. Hundreds of people showed up for a fundraiser in Cambria yesterday that raised money for families affected by the Didion corn mill explosion in May. Vendors sold quilts, t-shirts and food at the local high school. Didion is rebuilding the milling plant, but a memorial will stay standing outside to honor the five workers who lost their lives. More than a dozen others were injured. Well, coming up, you may want to look up tonight as the Northern Lights is set to light up the sky. We have a look at last night's show in South Dakota. And do you have what it takes to be a lumberjack champion? In just a few short weeks, you can test your limits right here in Wisconsin. But for a live look outside our Green Bay Tower Cam, how's it looking for your work week? Your full forecast coming up next. You're connected to NBC 26 News at 10 with Regina on Matt Hoffman Weather, and Chris Barrier Sports. NBC 26 News at 10, keeping you connected. And now, your Storm Shield forecast with NBC26 meteorologist Matt Hoffman. No need for the air conditioning tonight. It's going to be on the cooler side for sure. Already, temperatures about to dip down into the 50s. Some spots already in the 50s. And we'll start off tomorrow morning, generally in the lower 50s and some spots down into the 40s to begin your Monday. But with a lot of sunshine, temperatures will warm up a little bit warmer than today, getting into the upper 70s to near 80 degrees. Out there right now, it's 60 in Green Bay. That current dew point at 54 degrees. Very comfortable air in place across northeast Wisconsin. That's the way it'll stay again for tomorrow, but then 
the warmth and then the humidity build back in by Tuesday. Temperatures right now, it's 59 in Sturgeon Bay, 59 in Mantuak. We're at 53 in Mountain, 56 in Anago. Still holding on to 60s in parts of the Fox Valley, 63 in Appleton, 62 in Oshkosh, and 64 degrees currently in Wapaka. Wind speeds out of the generally the northeast and east. These are lightening up quite a bit across the area, and that will help as well as the dry air to allow those temperatures to fall into the upper 40s to lower 50s. That's where dew points are right now. Very comfortable air in place. Satellite and radar picture, clear skies across northeast Wisconsin. High pressure firmly in control, and we are going to stay clear tonight. And then through the day tomorrow, lots of sunshine in store. But for tonight, with the clear skies, we had a solar flare Thursday into Friday. And with that, that, that energy has now made it to the atmosphere. And we are looking at the potential, at least, to see the Aurora Borealis, the northern lights tonight. Best viewing will be now through about 1 a.m. So get away from the city lights and look to the north. And hopefully you see those northern lights. And if you do take some pictures, definitely send them our way to our Facebook page. We'd love to see them and share them tomorrow on our newscast. But very comfortable conditions, cool across the Great Lakes. But notice the warmer air that's off to the west. Also some higher dew points down to the south. Both the warmth and those higher dew points will be heading in our direction. The hottest weather will stay well to the west, though, those 90s and 100s. But it does get warmer and humid for the work week once we get past tomorrow with highs climbing into the 80s. Humid and also storm chances. But tomorrow dry for restaurant week looks pretty good with highs in the 70s. Skycast looking like this. Quiet conditions overnight. Tomorrow lots of sunshine, a beautiful day. Still some very comfortable humidity. And then as we head on into Tuesday, warmer, more humid. And then we're going to get some storm chances to work on in Tuesday night after dark. Some of those storms could be strong to severe, a marginal risk for severe weather for northeast Wisconsin and across much of the state of Wisconsin. So that just means one or two of those storms could be strong to severe. Tonight down to 50. Tomorrow we're going to see lots of sunshine, low humidity. Highs will tap out in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees with winds out of the southeast. A little bit cooler though along the lakeshore once again for tomorrow. And then as we get towards Tuesday, warmer, more humid. Storms will arrive after dark and then linger into Wednesday. Maybe some more redevelopment Wednesday afternoon. We'll have to kind of fine tune this forecast as more storm chances look to be in, in our uh, sites uh, for Thursday and Friday too. So it looks like a more active weather, kind of the same pattern we've been seeing and uh, also maybe could see some strong to severe storms mixed in there as well. It's kind of like the up and down. Some days you get really beautiful days like today and yeah. then sometimes it's like last night where it was kind of crazy. And it's all over true. The place. We get these small breaks and then you know this yeah. trend of more active oh, weather and this yeah. week again. I know I know. Right. All yeah. right. Well after last night's storm it was kind of scary but some good news is we got some great photos from our viewers. Take a look at these. Just a few that we picked out that were kind of a standout. Beautiful a photos there. Now, the and Oh, that yeah. looks interesting. What is that? Those are called mammatus clouds. You get those at the top of the storm, the anvil that kind of shoots out as the storm goes up, and, and you get these little mammatus clouds uh, with the instability. So and cool. yeah, just uh, amazing photos from last night with the setting sun and a lot of lightning uh, right. video as well we got. Of too. course, thank you to all of you who send these photos. It's amazing, it's beautiful. And you kind of see the red, is that from the sun? From the setting the, sun, oh yeah, gosh. just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. photos. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, everyone. All right, well, still ahead, the third annual Kid Quest Fishing Tournament in Oshkosh brought dozens of kids to spend a day on the lake and compete for the biggest fish. Stay tuned. Well, it's one of the largest free car shows in the country. It's the 40th annual Appleton Old Car Show and Swap Meet. This family-friendly event at Pierce Park had cars and more cars, food and yet more food. This car show actually started in 1976 for car collectors and enthusiasts. Through the years, it's grown from 300 cars to over 1,000 and even drawing in over 15,000 people. It makes me feel great that the community and the surrounding communities and uh, people that come from uh, basically four or five states away, they can come and enjoy the day and uh, typically it's, it's uh, an enjoyable day for the family and friends. The money raised is reinvested back into the Fox Cities and the Kiwanis Club. The youth today represent the next generation, so why not have them be great fishermen? Well, that's exactly the thought process behind today's third annual Fish Quest K-12 
Kids Fishing Tournament in Noshkosh for kids ages 6 through 12. Families not only got to spend the, the day on Lake Butamore, there was also food, prizes, and even raffle tickets. Weigh-in began at 1 p.m. and many were excited to reel them in. But the overall reward is so heart-wrenching and terrific. When you see children tell you that it was so great to be on a, the boat all day long, without the cell phone, without the Nintendo, without the electronics, and they got to spend the day with their dad or their mom. It was just great. Without Nintendo, all right. Well, next year, if you missed today, they'll hold another event the third Sunday in July. It's another Fish Quest event for the kids. Well, dozens of people heading to Riverside Park in Nina this afternoon for the 43rd Annual Arts Festival. Arts and crafts from 70 regional artists, from glass, jewelry to metal sculptures. There was even chainsaw carving demonstrations this year. This festival is a major fundraiser for the museum, supporting education programming and general admission to the museum for everyone. For doing this as long as we have for 43 years, we just see that this is a time for the community to come out, they meet their friends, they, they enjoy the day, and today's weather is absolutely perfect, so we couldn't ask for something better, and it just is a really gratifying opportunity to be able to welcome people to the museum in this manner. There were over a hundred volunteers helping to put this event together. Well, if the conditions are right tonight, you might be able to see the northern lights as we mentioned weather tonight. This time lapse video was taken just before sunrise today in South Dakota. If you want to check out tonight's repeat performance, you'll want to do it before 1 a.m. as Matt said and away from city lights. Do you have what it takes to be the next Lumberjack champion? Well, competitors will be heading to the annual Lumberjack World Championships next week in Hayward, 20 events for world records in areas such as log rolling, chopping, and the pole climb. Over 100 hopefuls are set to compete for $50,000 in prize money. For more information, visit our website, NBC26.com, and click on the story. Lodge Kohler is set to open this Wednesday in Titletown District, west of Lambeau Field. This Four Diamond Hotel partnered up with the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame to be its official lodging partner. Next Saturday, the Hall of Fame induction banquet will take place with former Packers wide receiver Donald Driver and quarterback Mark Lee. Well, thank you for spending your Sunday night with me. Stick around for Sports Rewind coming your way next. Good evening and welcome to Sunday Sports Rewind. I'm your host, Chris Barrier. I'll bet if I told you back in February that by midsummer, the Milwaukee Brewers will be five games ahead of the defending World Series champion Chicago Cubs and will occupy first place in the NL Central standings, you might say I'm crazy, right? Well, crazy seems to be the new normal because that's what's going on. Final day at Miller Park before hitting the road for 11 days. The first place crew looking to sweep the series against the Phillies. Now, if you don't know this guy yet, that, that's okay. That's Brett Phillips, a recent call-up, playing in only his eighth MLB game. But you got to know his laugh. It's quite possibly, it is the best laugh, made famous by the magic of the Internet. This is real. Take a listen. Why did the stadium get hot after the game? Because it was hot. All the fans left. <laughs> 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 Pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah, so that man comes in to pinch hit in the bottom of the fifth with two outs, and who's laughing now? Brett Phillips knocks his first career MLB home run. It's a two-run shot to right that gives the Brewers a 2-1 lead. You got to love it. Top of the six, Tyler Webb making his Brewers debut, his very first pitch in a Milwaukee uniform, and it is a grand slam. Thank you very much, Nick Williams. Tough way to get her going. The Brewers lose the finale 5-2, but still quite the memorable day for Mr. Laughing Brett Phillips. Kelly Price has more from Miller Park. The Brewers start the second half of the season by taking the series against the Phillies, but dropping today 5-2. to two. A bright spot, though, as Brett Phillips launched his first Major League homer to give the Brewers their only lead of the game. The home run was fun and exciting, but uh, a win would have uh, been a lot cooler to go along with it, you know, but um, it's, it's going to be memorable. You know, the, the fans of Milwaukee made it extra special with uh, the curtain call, you know, calling me out there and celebrating with the team for that uh, short period of time. It was just an uh, unexplainable feeling. And, you know, it was funny because uh, Braun and 
Broxton actually called the home so run before the game, and uh, they were talking about it. They're like, today's the day. You're going to get a pinch hit and hit a homer, and sure enough, <laughs> pinch hit homer, which was uh, super funny. His first big league home run. To me, it's his real big first big moment here. It's a great moment, and... Um, you know, I think, you know, for whatever happens with Brett the rest of the year, it's something that, you know, he can lean on for the rest of the, you know, kind of moving forward here. And he's had a moment and that had some success and a big moment of success and contributed. Next up for the crew, 10 road games in 11 days, beginning at Pittsburgh on Monday. Keeping you connected at Miller Park, I'm Kelly Price for NBC 26. All right, thank you, Kelly. Even with the loss, the Brewers are still comfortably in first place, four and a half games ahead of the Cubs. Although Chicago also won today 8 to nothing over the Orioles. After Phillips homer today, Milwaukee has 143 dingers on the year, still the most in the National League. They have the most stolen bases in the NL with 78, but unfortunately you'll see a first place there with strikeouts as well, 904. Well, when we come back, we'll check in on Aaron Rodgers' golf game out in Lake Tahoe. Plus, the high school football all-star game yesterday turned rivals into comrades. You're watching Sunday Sports Rewind, back in a flash. Welcome back to the show. While it might be mid-July now, the start of football season is approaching as fast as, say, a blitzing Clay Matthews towards a helpless quarterback, and that's kind of a scary sight. Yesterday, not so scary. We got a little reminder of what Friday nights in the Fox Valley feels like with the Wisconsin Football Coaches Association All-Star Game. Even had a guy fly in on a... Uh, air uh, parachute, that's pretty cool. Southern All-Stars got the best of the North, winning the big schools game 10-0 after the game was called due to lightning. South also won the small schools game on three consecutive touchdown passes in the second half, 25-20 the final. But this game wasn't about wins and losses, it was about brotherhood. And for many on the field, yesterday was the last time they'll put on the pads as a high schooler. It doesn't hit me until you just said it actually just now, but uh, uh, you know, just enjoying the experience this guy is all week. It's been great. Come out here on Saturday, you see all these people, you're playing in your uniform. It's, it's a great experience. So we didn't get the win obviously today, but I mean, it hasn't really hit me. It's my last game, but it was sure fun. It was great to get one last game out here with people that I've played against the last four years and to team up with one of my, one of my other teammates, two of my coaches. It was a great experience building new friendships, and it was great to put the pads on one more time as a high schooler. Well, high school for those two guys might be done, but college ball is on the horizon now. This fall, the captain will play for St. Norbert, and Hippus will be a freshman corner at the University of North Dakota. Speaking of football, Aaron Rodgers finished in eighth place today at the final round of the American Century Championship Golf Tournament out in Lake Tahoe. One birdie, five bogeys for a final round of 76. Former Major League pitcher Mark Mulder won the tournament for the third year in a row, and Steph Curry shot the record lowest round, a 68. That's like a, you know, a real golf score. I'll leave you with this. The Men's Singles Championship from Wimbledon. Roger Federer in search of a record eighth win in the major. Up two sets to none. Fed serves up an ace for breakfast on championship point. Are you kidding me? Right down the chalk. Federer defeats Marin Silic Silich. Something like that. 636164. He didn't lose a set the entire tournament. It's his eighth win at the All England Lawn in his 19th major championship. That does it for the, this edition of Sports Rewind. Good night. <laughs>